if something happens to any of these modules, that the battery is not going to go down. And even if I take one whole battery, the other ones will continue. We have rigorous reliability testing, and I, I really hope that one day you'll get, a, you'll get a chance to visit our other locations where we do a lot of that testing to see the extent that we go to to test uh, environmental conditions, mechanical conditions, electrical conditions, and so on, to continuously improve the quality of that building block. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge, and today we're coming back to you from Enphase headquarters here in Fremont, California. And this afternoon I'm joined again by Mohammed al Quran, Senior Director of Systems Engineering at Enphase, and today we're looking at the new Enphase IQ Battery 10T. So Mohammed, good afternoon, thanks again for joining us. Hey, thank you for uh, coming and uh, pleasure to talk to you, Joe. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks again for the invitation. It's, it's really a, a treat for me to, you know, ha kind of be invited to look at sort of, you know, behind the scenes and underneath the hood at some of the products here. And of course, the product that we're looking at in today's video is the IQ Battery 10T. Now, I, I guess let, let's just start, you know, how does the new IQ Battery 10T differ from the IQ Battery 10 or the N-Charge 10 that we're more familiar with? Uh, sure. Yeah. So the there are things that are similar to the 10. If I compare the 10T to the 10, or the 3T to the 3, and I'll explain the differences uh, uh, soon. Um, but there are th some things that are different. So in terms of power and capacity, so power-wise and capacity-wise, the batteries are the same. The 10T versus the 10. Uh, however, we didn't we did introduce internal improvements. Uh, internally and in the construction of the some of the mechanical components and other things it's basically uh, a revision uh, on the on the battery uh, we also use the uh, different supply for the lithium-ion batteries um, the key thing that we did is that we made the batteries flatter so that they don't uh, extend as much from the wall uh, the reason for that is that if you install these batteries in a tight space like a garage or someone like that um, they have a, a, a sleeker design so that they don't um, they, they don't take up more of the space that's available. So they take up more wall space, slightly more wall space, but um, uh, not protruding as much from the wall. And we can talk a little more about that uh, soon. Sure, sure. And that, that's actually one of the first things I noticed when I looked at the battery. It looks like it's a much thinner battery, maybe six or seven inches deep but a little bit wider than the original N-Charge 10. Um, but besides the physical dimensions, uh, I guess, what, what do people need to know about your battery? Let's say if they're a homeowner out there and they're considering a battery storage option for their home, um, or frankly, if they're an installer out there, you know, we're, we're here in California. Many of the California solar installers are now making batteries mandatory with their solar installations going forward now that we're in this NEM 3.0 world where you're not, you're not getting that one-for-one -one buyback anymore. Um, what do folks need to know about the 10T battery as it might compare to some of the other uh, battery brands that are on the market like Solar Edge or Tesla? Yeah, sure. So um, the uh, Enphase batteries uh, continue to operate within the Enphase energy management system which allows you to operate in a grid-tight fashion or in off-grid. So the batteries continue to provide power uh, to offset your consumption, your loads, uh, during high tariff times. They allow you to, uh, import, to, to store solar energy uh, when you have excess solar during the day and you don't want to export that to the grid or there's a low feed-in tariff and you'd rather save that energy for uh, later. Um, and additional use cases for uh, grid tight. And they also allow you to do backup energy. So these batteries also have the IQ8 grid forming inverters, which allow them to be grid forming. Now, if you do that, you will need a system controller that goes along with the batteries to allow the grid forming functionality and you'll need a combiner box that comes with it. But um, so from a, from a functionality point of view, the functionalities are there and these batteries, they continue to do it. Now, uh, uh, the one thing about our batteries is that we use lithium iron phosphate batteries, LFP, 
Uh, we've been using LFP from the beginning of development our, of our batteries, and we like to stay with that because of the uh, safety qualities of LFP. So the one thing I always say is that not all lithium ion batteries are created equally. Uh, some are safer than others, and when it comes to the golden standard in the commercially available lithium ion batteries, LFP is, uh, is a golden standard when it comes to that. So that's why we like using this. And this is a big difference between these batteries and other batteries that are there. Um, the other thing is that the batteries that we have are modular. Uh, we pick the size such that it can accommodate small systems, medium systems, or large systems because of the AC coupled nature of these batteries and their modularity. They allow you to address any job from having just one battery on site to having even 12 batteries if you want on a, a regular installation with a system controller. Um, so that flexibility and modularity is another thing. You know, you don't always need a big size battery for, for every job. And, and honestly, sometimes you have power limitations that don't allow you to install a large battery. So you, you pick the smaller one. And if you need more, then you can install more. The, the other key thing for us is quality and reliability. So as you know, these batteries are based on the IQ8 microinverters, which are the eighth generation of our inverters. And they have all the improvements and all the learnings and the accumulated uh, uh, um, improvements that we've had in our quality and reliability. So if you think about it, these inverters on the roof are expected to last at least 20 years and with high reliability and high quality. And those are the same inverters that we use in these batteries. So you know that these are built to last. You know that they're going to be of high quality and high reliability. So that's a big differentiator between our batteries and competitor batteries. Uh, these are just some of the things that the batteries can do and some of the qualities of these batteries, among others. Great. So, you, so you're saying in addition to, let's say, we've got a, a, a home solar system, you've got microinverters on your solar, you're saying inside the battery, you actually use microinverters as well to do the, the power conversion? That is correct. Yes, we do that. We have each battery. Um, actually, the 10T is composed of three batteries of the 3T, and each one of the 3T has four microinverters in it. So in that case, a 10T will have 12 microinverters in it. Can we take a look? Yeah, sure. You want to pop the cover and we can yeah, take a look at Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's do that. Cool. Uh, is this just pull right off here? Yep. All right. Pull right off. Oh, OK. Well, that was easy enough. Yeah. Let's put it down. OK. Right. Well, there you got it. There they are. Okay. So yeah, could maybe kind of walk us through. So what, what are we looking at here? I see the microinverters. I see what look like some heat, heat fins here. What, what, so what are we looking at here as far as the internals? Sure. So um, like I said, each 10T battery, which is this, has three batteries inside. So what we do is that we build for the, for the T models, we build one battery, which is this one. Each one battery is called a 3T, and you can install one by itself. Uh, you can install individual two, two individual ones. But if you put three, then we have a cover that, that covers the three. So the covers we have match a one or three. Um, that gives you flexibility in how many you, you want to install. And when you put three and you connect them this way, it becomes a 10T. But the building block, the modular battery, is still the 3T. Now, each 3T has uh, four microinverters in it. These are stacked this way. Maybe hard to see with the camera, but they're stacked this way. Um, each inverter is an IQ8X BAT microinverter. Each inverter has 320 watts power, bi-directional power capability. So that gives the battery 1.28 kilowatt combined for each of these 3T, 3.84 kilowatts of power bi-directional for each of the 10T. And then each of the uh, building blocks has a 3.36 uh, uh, kilowatt hours of capacity. Uh, so that gives you roughly 10 kilowatt hours for the combined three. So if I look at the 10T, it has 10 kilowatt hours of storage capacity plus 3.84 kilowatts of power. Now each of these uh, IQ8 microinverters has our uh, latest and greatest ASIC 
And the ASIC is a semiconductor, customized semiconductor that we produce that combines a lot of the functionalities for the microinverter. That allows us to produce uh, devices that do power conversion quickly, efficiently, reliably, and in an affordable way. And that's really the, the secret sauce in the microinverter, which is the heart of the battery in a lot of our systems. Uh, inside the battery, we also have uh, what we call a battery management uh, system or battery management unit, BMU or a BMS. And that's inside. And the responsibility of that is to make sure that the batteries are operated safely. We monitor every cell voltage in the battery. So the battery has a series of cells in it. And uh, the, the, the BMS monitors every cell for voltage. It monitors the temperature of different parts of the battery to make sure that the battery is operated safely. And in the event there's any anomaly, there shouldn't be, but in the event there's any anomaly, the system will completely shut down the battery, will not allow export or import into the battery. And that keeps it uh, safe. Now, these batteries passed what we call, or what's called the UL9540A, which is one of the highest standards when it comes to safety for batteries. And that standard looks at the event uh, where something can go wrong in the battery, and they actually force something to go wrong and make sure that the battery responds in a safe manner, does not create fire or explosions or anything in the event something like that happens. So all of these are... Uh, they, they all were uh, tested to that standard. Uh, also inside there is something we call a battery controller and that's just the brain of the communication and control for the system. It controls the microinverters and it talks to the BMS and it also talks to the gateway. So these batteries are only wired using AC wiring. So the AC wiring comes in, let's say from that side and then it connects to this next battery and the next battery, they're daisy chained here. And the communication happens wirelessly using Zigbee communication devices in these batteries that talk to a wireless communication module that exists in the combiner box. So it's not probably in the frame, but there is a combiner box that would have a, a wireless comms kit. Maybe we can pan and show it. So this is the combiner box and inside the combiner box, it's populated here. This is the comms kit. This is a, a Zigbee communication kit that allows the combiner to communicate with these batteries and in this case to communicate also with the system controller. The system controller is the box that we see here and that's the box that allows the combination of batteries and combiner to do the grid forming functionalities and allows us to, to connect and disconnect from the grid. So I just wanted to explain that about the communication. And then if we, yeah, if we go back to the battery, you mentioned here some of the heat fins that we have. Those uh, heat fins just help with the passive cooling of the batteries. So one of the greatest things about these batteries is that they're completely silent. Our batteries don't have any pumps in them. They don't have any fans. They're completely silent. So if you operate these in an area where you care about noise, uh, you're going to be happy with that because actually all of our products, the combiner box, and the system controller, and the batteries, and the microinverters, they're all silent because they don't have any fans or pumps in them. So that's just a, an overview about the, our uh, 10T and 3T batteries. That's great. Thank you. So, so a couple, couple questions for you and a couple observations. Um, so first of all, I, I can see now with the cover off that there are three distinct battery modules right and they are they are connected together with this daisy chain but besides this daisy chain these are basically three separate batteries if we want to call it that i've got something to say about that in a moment but um they're just they're just parallel connected i suppose you might Correct. say so so it, so it looks like one battery appliance to the rest of the system um but in reality and we, we keep calling these things batteries but they're, they're not really batteries this is what i would say is an energy storage system that includes battery storage, which I presume is behind this, this heat fin here, is, is the actual Correct. battery cells, the lithium iron phosphate cells. You've got the battery management system, which is, is a computer basically that controls the battery. And then you've got your inverter rectifier, which in this case, you're using four, for each battery module, four individual IQ8 series microinverters to do your inversion and your rectification. Now this is something unique. We don't really see this in other AC coupled battery systems. We would typically see a single 
um, inverter charger or inverter rectifier. Um, how does the, the more distributed architecture here using, in this case, using 12 separate micro inverters to do the inverting and the charging, how does that, or does that provide any advantage compared to just using one central unit? Yes, the answer is yes, it does. Um, and, the, and the reason for that is because of redundancy. Now, you don't have a single point of failure because you have multiple units that are processing the power. And that means few things. It means that the speed at which you modulate the power, uh, including something we call uh, grid impedance emulation, basically operating at, a, at a, an optimum point that allows me to produce power in the best way possible and reacting to changes on the grid can be done super fast because I'm only, each unit is processing a small amount of power at a time as opposed to one big thing that's trying to produce uh, a large amount of power. So that's one thing. Um, the second thing is redundancy like we said. So in that fashion, if something happens to any of these modules that the battery is not going to go down. And even if I take one whole battery, the other ones will continue. I'll call it an energy system, which is the right term. Um, we use the term battery just to, to make it easier for people to understand the, the, the function of it. No, I know. Uh, but, and I call it and you did it, too. And you said it correctly. It is a combination of a battery plus a bidirectional charging system that goes along with it. Uh, but that redundancy allows us to uh, operate faster. It allows us uh, resiliency. And it also allows us to take advantage of the high quality and reliability that we've built over the years with our PV microinverters. So taking all the learnings that we've learned on the mechanical design, hardware design, the firmware design, the software design, we have rigorous reliability testing. And I, I really hope that one day you'll get, a, you'll get a chance to visit our other locations where we do a lot of that testing to see the extent that we go to to test uh, environmental conditions, mechanical conditions, electrical conditions, and so on, to continuously improve the quality of that building block. So if we have a high reliability, high quality, affordable building block, then really the right thing to do is reuse that building block in other products to build on the knowledge that you have in it. So that's, for us, a third advantage that we have to allow producing batteries that can you know, stretch the limits of reliability and quality um, because of the learnings that go into them. Great, great. Well, Mohammed, thank you for taking time to kind of walk us through and, and give me this sort of underneath the hood access. This is a product that I've actually covered for quite some time, but it's my first time actually pulling the cover off and, and looking at the components that make up the battery appliance or the energy storage system, I should say. Um, Incredible. Well, folks, this, this is the current generation end phase, uh, the IQ Battery 10T. It's, it's really the, the third generation of end phase battery, maybe the second generation since the batteries have been in broader distribution. We talked about the original 1.2 kilowatt AC hour, battery, the little cube correct. blocks from the, from the first generation, but I remember that. Um, but this is, this is the current state of the art as far as home battery backups, lithium iron phosphate chemistry, passively cooled, integrated battery management system and integrated inverter charger, but using the micro inverters to do the inverting and the charging so you can take advantage of that, that redundancy and that reliability. Well, folks, that pretty much does it for today's video. Um, again, I'm Joe Wardia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.